Let's go ahead and talk about Rust Up, which is an installer for the systems programming language Rust. Really, it's actually one of the most easy ways to get started with any language I've ever experienced. It's a one-liner, and I'm gonna go ahead and use that to set up AWS Cloud9. Let's go ahead and get in here. I'm gonna say create new environment. Now, for a Python programmer who's been using uh, you know, a Cloud9 environment, uh, really in many ways this will be much easier. What I'm gonna do is compare it though to a Python programmer's uh, experience. So let's go ahead and say new Rust here. And uh, I'll go ahead and say large instance. Uh, for here I'll just say, you know, I'm gonna compare Python and Rust. There we go. So I think a lot of people coming to Rust are gonna be coming to it from Python. And I think this will be a good experience to show a little bit of what you would have to do to set up Python initially, what is what I would typically do myself, what are some of the tools, and then how we can compare it to Rust and how it's actually a much simpler and more straightforward process to set up things for Rust. Now, while that's spinning up, one of the things I'm gonna show you as well is that I have a new uh, project template for Rust here. And so I'm gonna borrow some of the concepts of this project, but if you needed to create your own project, where it was able to be automatically tested and it's got a nice make file set up for you. You could actually fork this when you wanted to create a new project or even say use this template. That's one of the really cool things about GitHub Codespaces, another cloud-based development environment. And in fact, if I go ahead and I, I select Codespaces, right, I could just uh, spin up an environment because I've done all the hard work and configured this environment for you. But we're not gonna do that right now. All I'm gonna do is copy this make file once the Cloud9 environment sets up. So if I go back here, we can see it spun up here. And first, let me show you what I would do in a Python environment. Now, one of the, the downsides of Python is that it's a recommended practice to create a virtual environment. Uh, the two most popular are virtual environment, which is built into the Python language. And in fact, most software engineers lean towards the virtual environment that's built into Python. Uh, and there are more data scientists that are using potentially other tools like Conda. Uh, so let's go ahead and use the, the built-in virtual environment. So we can see here Python 3 dash M V E and V. And if I go ahead and I put this into the virtual environment directory in my home directory, this is a reasonable practice, right? So I, I go ahead and I do that. Then what I would typically do is I would edit my bash RC, right? So this is a little bit of a tax, right? I mean, it's, it's not horrible but it's not great. Uh, I'd always have to do this for a new environment, which is one of the things that's a, a bit of a pain with Python, but let's go ahead and do it. Let's just say source tilde dot V E and V bin activate. Now activate. Now, one of the nice things though, I guess is as soon as I've done this, or, you know, we can just create a new environment here. If I just say a new terminal, look, it sources that virtual environment. So that's okay, right? So that solves part of the problem, but we're still not done, right? If I'm going to be developing for AWS, what do I have to do? Use Boto3. Well, let's try it out. If I say import Boto3, what happens? Not installed. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, there's no structure, right? We have no config files, nothing. How do I actually install things? The documentation refers to pip. It doesn't refer to conda, right? There's no other tools. So what do I have to do? Well, typically most people do this. They create a requirements, again, uh, the, the Python standard library doesn't create this for me. And then I have to actually go into the requirements file. And then I have to actually go in here and say uh, Boto3, right? And then we're not done yet. I have to actually say pip install dash r requirements. So what happens is that obviously you can use Python for packaging. I just did it. And then if I type in, you know, the Python here and import uh, Boto3, Look, it works, but the tax though, when it, when it adds up year after year after year, you, you realize like this, this is a lot of work. So are, is there an alternative? Well, there is. Let's try Rust up. So I'm going to go here, copy it, go ahead and just paste Rust up. Now I just say return and it's trivial to install Rust onto my, my system and it'll grab the latest version and look what it's doing. It's putting linters, formatters. Uh, the packaging tool, the documentation tools, all of it is put in one tool. And notice this, this tool, Cargo, is automatically put into my Bash RC. I don't have to do anything. 
And then if I wanted to create a new project, trivial, it's all created for me. I say cargo new, hello, like that. And guess what? Now I've got the entire structure that is ready for me to write code against. And in fact, look at this, it already built a packaging system for me. I would just add in my dependencies right here. So when people ask me, well, aren't they just kind of similar? No, they're not. Actually, from the beginning, uh, the Rust ecosystem builds out a production first mindset and allows you to build things so that you have binary based distributions. Now, one of the things I would recommend is to use a make file to make your life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. If I go back to this new project structure here, I have a make file and let's look at it. I, I have some versioning stuff that just shows me what's going on. I, I allow my code to be formatted. I can lint my code, test my code, run my code, release my code, all that stuff, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and say, grab all this stuff in here, go back to my environment. Let's go ahead and CD into the hello. And we'll just say touch, make file, like that. Let's throw that in there. And what's great, let's make sure you change it to, to tabs here, which is always a, a good idea for make files where you'll have lots of problems. But once we did this, now all I have to do is just say make run. Right now, you can obviously run cargo run, but what I find is that it's nice to have a uniform structure when you're working with multiple languages, like, cause I switch in back and forth between tons of different languages and I like this style, right? Which is format my code, lint my code, test my code, run my code. I do the same thing for Python. So if I just say make run, check this out. It compiles my project, hello world. So basically hello world's written for you. And we take a look at the Rust, nothing, right? So it's not a very complex language. Additionally, because uh, I also do a lot of programming with, co with Copilot from GitHub, we can really work our way into programming with Rust. So another thing we'll, we'll talk about too is if I go through here and I, I kind of mess up my code a little bit, if I type in make format, right, uh, we also can format our code. If I created some kind of a, a problem in my code and I type in make lint, right? The linter is gonna go, hey, whoa, what are you doing? You, we can't do that, right? So even the linter is also your friend. So you have a huge uh, section of tools that help you be successful with Rust. And then finally, as I mentioned, from the very beginning, right, we've got a production deploy, right? So we have a target debug. And in fact, if I go to hello, there we go, right? So in my opinion, for many, MLOps type projects, data engineering projects, Rust is a, a great substitute for Python. And this is one of many examples I'm gonna to show to people to get them excited about switching from Python to Rust.